Hello, Cricketers, and welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda, and thank you so much for joining me today. In today's tutorial, I am showing you all the tips and tricks I know that will help you get your print then cut projects done right. Now, if you own a Cricut Explore Air 2 like this one, I'm sure you are familiar with this. Just recently, within the past few months, there have been some updates in Cricut Design Space that have caused, I would say, glitches with the print then cut system. And I have tried every single tip and trick I know. I will make sure to include all of them in this tutorial. If you know of any others that I don't show, make sure you leave a comment below to let me know, oh, I've tried this, Delanda, and this works. Or if you find one of these that is helpful to you, please let me know which one works for you the best. Now, I wanna help you get from this to print then cut success with stickers, and I'm gonna show you my full process. So without further ado, let's get started. Tip number one, let's say you get your mat loaded and you are ready to cut your printed image and you get the infamous message on the screen that says your sensor marks can't be read. My first tip is to reduce the light. You can do that by closing the lid and by reducing the amount of light that is in your work area. That is one thing that has worked for me in the past. If this works, then you're good to go. If not, move to the next step. Tip number two. Let's say tip number one does not work. The next easiest tip is to get a black Sharpie and go around the registration marks. And I mean that literally. So remove the mat from the machine, grab a ruler, grab a black Sharpie, and literally trace over the registration marks with the black Sharpie. Now you may be wondering if any black marker will work. I would assume so. However, I've only tried this with a black Sharpie and it has worked for me in the past. So this is the second easiest tip is to get a black Sharpie or a black marker and go over the registration marks and then reinsert the mat into the machine. Tip number three, if reducing the light doesn't work and going over it with the black Sharpie doesn't work, my third tip is to go over the registration lines with scotch tape. Matte scotch tape works best. You don't need any gloss to it or anything like that. I purchased this scotch tape from the Dollar Tree or Dollar Tree or whatever we're calling it these days. Just go over the lines with scotch tape. Go over each of those registration lines the same way that you did with the black Sharpie. And if that doesn't work, I have one additional tip that we can try with this tutorial. Tip number four is to calibrate your machine. You'll have to do this from Cricut Design Space. Let me show you how to do that. Once you get to Cricut Design Space, you'll click on those three lines in the top left and click calibration. You'll click print, then cut, and then you'll be prompted to search for your printer. Once your printer is selected, then go ahead and click OK and you will be prompted to print a calibration sheet. You'll do this on regular printer paper. I have a sheet of plain white paper and I'm using my Canon MX470 printer. This printer has not been converted for sublimation. This is a regular desk jet printer and I'm putting one sheet of paper in to be printed for calibration. When my paper comes out of the printer, I will get it loaded on a green standard grip mat. I have my laptop set up next to my Cricut Explore Air 2. And right now the sensors are reading the lines of the calibration sheet. And once it finishes reading the lines, there will start to be some test cuts that and I will have to feel over the test cuts to see if they are cut in the right place. I'm just gonna still follow the prompts that are on the screen.
The first cut that will take place is the little square that's in the middle. And I'll follow the prompts to fill that cut to see if the lines are cut accurately. After I check that cut, the Cricut will start to make cut lines along the top and the right side of the paper. And after it's finished making little cut lines over all of those black marks on the paper, then I'll have to check and see which one is the closest to the middle. And once again, I will be following the prompts that are on the screen. Now I'm being asked to look at those cuts and make a decision about the cuts at the top of the paper and on the right side of the paper to determine which one is the best cut. So right here, I'm feeling over the cuts and I'm getting a good look at it to determine which one is the most accurate in my opinion. Then I have to go back to the screen and make my selection. So I'm going to go and do that. And then the Cricut will do one additional cut. When it does this last cut, I can decide whether or not I like it. I'm bringing it closer so you can get a better view of what I was looking and feeling for. I, I realize you can't see the numbers with this view, but at the top, I chose number 10 and on the right side, I chose letter L. Now I'm removing it from the mat and you can see that rec the rectangle is perfect and so is the inner square. Now I'm ready to try my print then cut stickers. I am gonna start by getting my image printed. If you notice, there is nothing in my paper tray. I never keep paper in there. I only send one sheet of paper through at a time. I am using paper that is glossy on one side and the other side is matte. I'm gonna put the paper in with the glossy side face down. This was the first try after the calibration and believe it or not, it did not come out well. The finished result from this first cut was not good and I was getting very frustrated. This is what the first cut actually looked like. You can see that the cuts were way off and I just didn't understand it, especially right after calibration. The second thing I tried was going over it with the Sharpie and closing the lid, but nope. Then I moved my Cricut to another side of the room and nope. I even draped a black tablecloth over the machine to make it darker than it already was, and that still didn't work. The thing that finally did it for me was adding tape to the registration lines, and I was able to achieve success. I should have just gone in order for the things I knew to try because adding tape to the registration line was the thing that worked. 
So this is what the stickers look like. They still have the backing on them because I plan to give them to one of the teachers at the school. Just regular scotch tape did the trick and I will get these stickers pulled away from the sheet and I'll get them put in this baggie. If you found this tutorial helpful, please go ahead and like this video, subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye.